Hey, it's Pride Month. June is Pride Month, Gay Pride Month. I don't think anybody should take pride in that, quite frankly. I don't take pride in being heterosexual. I don't think people should take pride in being gay. You were born that way. I was born this way. We take pride in our achievements, I don't know, our, our contributions, uh, but in your sexuality? Now, I get it. You know, for a long time, people had to hide, but those days are long gone. And this is over the top. Today marks the beginning of Pride Month. Nationwide, there will be parades, festivals, and concerts to celebrate the LGBTQ community. We are celebrating the start of Pride Month with some pop-up parties, and we've got one going right outside here in Times Square. Um, I'm just not into it, and I don't think anybody should be into it. Yeah, because Pride, actually, for a long time, and I think it still is, a bad thing, right? Pride actually considered a sin, an excessive preoccupation with uh, self and one's own importance, achievements, status, or possessions. Well, I know I mentioned that thing about achievements, but and by the way, you can have, anybody can have too much pride, no matter what your sexual orientation. So I just think it's a little bit much. What do you think? And corporate America, man, oh man, oh man, have they embraced this pride, which I just don't think is good. American Airlines, take a look at this. They are yeah, even the engines are gay. Uh, let's see, Fritos. I actually do love Fritos. They are all in, all in. That's a LGBTQ trans. Yep, there's the trans flag. The pink and the blue on the left, that's trans. Let's see, BMW, uh, Bavarian Motor Works, right? Okay, now you'll notice actually here in America, they got the BMW gay pride version, but in Saudi Arabia, no, not so much. You may want to think about not doing business in Saudi Arabia because they're so terrible to gay people over there. Uh, same with Pfizer, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. Uh, here in America, it's, uh, yep, gay pride. But overseas, in countries where they oppress gay people, well, they still do business, they still tweet, they still promote themselves. How about applying pressure that gay people throughout the world are treated with dignity and respect and their behavior, their practice is not criminalized as it is in many parts of the world. The Trump administration, by the way, you can put that down now, was uh, very, very active in decriminalizing, getting the world to decriminalize gay activity. More on that from Rick Grinnell in just a little bit, Donald Trump's director of national intelligence. This is where pride is excessive, gay pride is excessive, when you see it on a church. Now, I don't understand this. Quite frankly, to me, it feels like they're excluding me. You know, we're all sinners, yet I don't bring, you don't bring that stuff to, you bring yourself, look, I don't know how to put it, I just feel that this is wrong, okay? This is exclusionary. That's what it's starting to feel like, excluding folks who are not gay when you celebrate it this much. And by the way, they were doing this way before Pride Month. My beloved core, the United States Marine Corps, all in with gay pride. USMC takes pride, right. We've gone from don't ask, don't tell to uh, take a look at the helmet, by the way. Yeah, they made the bullets, they fashioned the bullets into uh, the gay pride flag. Um, this image, by the way, board to serve, is a ripoff from Full Metal Jacket, perhaps one of the greatest war movies of all time. And look at what the helmet used to say, born to kill, real bullets on the side. But, uh, oh, they did have the peace uh, symbol, the duality of man, the Jungian thing, sir. Look, what I loved about the Marine Corps, even before Don't Ask, Don't Tell, we just didn't think about it that much. It wasn't a thing. Uniformity, teamwork, that was the thing. That's how we won World War II. Does this sound corny? It's not. This is how, by being a team, coming together, overlooking our differences instead of celebrating our differences. And that's what it's all about now, even for my beloved core. Take a look at this.
I'm not buying it. We were one color in the Marine Corps when I was in green, <laughs> green. Sometimes you said dark green, but we were green. And now it's all about differences. This would not be happening under President Trump. It wouldn't. He would, he would root it out and push back. And we need him. We need him very badly because uh, the country, if it were a car, the wheels would be falling off right now. Tuned into the fake news. If you ever want to know what's going on in the swamp, how bad it is, take a peek. Don't stay long at Morning Joe. Take a look. Rev, we're looking at one poll now that shows 81% of Americans support expanded background checks. Another poll from Politico last week had it at 88%, 84% support in the country for red flag laws. That's not just Democrats, that's not just progressives, that's gun owners, as Mara said, that's Republicans, it's conservatives as well. So that's the frustration you see, and we have heard it from President Biden, but we heard from people like Senator Murphy, who has made this a central issue in his political career, gun safety, that... There's so much more that could be done, and yet here we are sort of at the table looking at scraps. Well, first of all, you got to remember, a big part of the swamp, a big part of the media is being pompous like that guy and falling in love with his own voice and talking and talking and talking, and nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. And talking to a guy like Reverend Al Sharpton, that question for Reverend Al? You know Al. Well, it, it, it ought to be a... Yeah, you see, we're going to cut him off right there because... Uh, what you got to understand about Reverend Al is uh, he's basically a criminal. He basically hates cops. He's basically a very, very bad guy with a horrible past, yet they put him, <laughs> they've welcomed him into the swamp. Listen to this. I'm not exaggerating. I leave it off in the pig. Well, ain't got pigs out here. You ain't off one of them. <laughs> what I believe in, I do. Do what you believe in. Right. Oh, shut up and admit you've lost your courage and your guts to stand up. I would love to use love, but if I've got to use hate, I'll deal with my hand calls for it. He's never repudiated any of this stuff. Was he calling on the death of cops there? Sounded like it to me. And then there was the Tawana Brawley fiasco. Now, this is a little bit, uh, the footage is old. It kind of runs all over the place, but it gives you a sense of who he is. Led by Reverend Al Sharpton, her lawyers, Alton Maddox and C. Vernon Mason, charged police and even the governor with a cover-up. They told Tawana and her family not to talk to anyone. Sharpton appeared in Manhattan criminal court and with lawyer Alton Maddox at his side, heard the charges against him. They stem from Sharpton's national youth movement and his handling of its finances. The state says it investigated for two years. And the Reverend Sharpton was blamed for irresponsibly exploiting to want a Broly to promote himself. Since the Broly affair, Al Sharpton has been noisily... I don't even know who you are and I'm talking to you. And that's what people can't forget. They believe that Sharpton exploited... Sharpton exploits. He certainly did. He certainly does. Tawana Brawley, by the way, claimed she was raped. And she wasn't. And <laughs> Al Sharpton hitched his wagon to this obviously false claim that was proven so by a Democrat attorney general of New York State at the time, a guy by the name of Robert Abrams, definitively concluded that she was lying. And uh, I believe some People sued her, and they sued her successfully. All right, so now Al Sharpton gets to go to funerals, and he didn't even know the person, and he does the eulogy? As you sat here last week on the set, we were talking about 10-year-olds being murdered in their fourth grade classroom, and you were flying out to give a eulogy for an 86-year-old grandmother who was killed in the aisle of a grocery store. What's it like to be in that church trying to sue the family in a moment like that when their grandmother has been shot senselessly while shopping for groceries? The real question is, what is it like delivering a eulogy for somebody you did not know, for somebody you never met? That's a better question. And what are you doing there to begin with? <laughs> Why? It's about money, by the way. It's about money. Oh, yeah. Money is driving so much of this. His friend Ben Crump 
has become a millionaire, and he has done very, very well as well. All right, got to do one more thing at the White House. Joe Biden yesterday had a, uh, well, the boy band, uh, BTS. They're big in Korea, and they dropped by the White House. This is an important month here in America. A lot of our Asian American friends have uh, been subject to real discrimination. Hate only hides. When good people talk about it and say how bad it is, it goes down. People care a lot about what you say, and what you're doing is good for all people. It's not just your great talent. It's the message you're communicating. It matters. Now, Joe is doing what he's done ever since he's become president, implying that, you know, there's a threat of white supremacy toward Asian people. That's false, by the way. That's false. White supremacy is totally blown out of proportion. And where anti-Asian hate crime is actually, well, who's committing them? Joe doesn't tell the truth about that. We will in just a little bit.